Hello everyone and welcome to another video in Walrus Code. I wanted to share with you guys and girls the exciting and interesting stuff I've been learning in the last couple of months and it's regarding FPGAs. This is the thing you're seeing right now, it's an FPGA board. To be precise, it's the basis 3 of the Chinese boards. And what is running on top of it, it's a 32-bit CPU whose architecture is a MIPS architecture. You know, there are many different architectures in the computer world uh, nowadays, like the ARM architecture x88, x64, and so on. The RISC-V, which is another popular open architecture. But in this example, we are using the MIPS architecture, which was very popular back in the days when they were teaching computer architectures in the universities back in the 70s or maybe the 80s, I don't know. But Okay, how do you learn this stuff? I've been learning this using this amazing book, which I cannot recommend enough. It's called Digital Design and Computer Architecture, written by the authors David Money Harris and Sarah Harris, two very cool teachers. So what is this CPU running right now? It's this program, which we can see it's made of four instructions only, and those instructions are first here written in assembly code. It's the miss MIPS assembly to be precise and these are the same four instructions just decompiled to binary but written in hexadecimal format. So the first instruction and the second instruction are the same are the add immediate they just add uh, to a, a register to an immediate value and then store the result in a destiny register which is the T0 just to mention that the dollar sign zero register it's basically the number zero it's hardwired to the number zero so we are adding zero to 12 and storing the result in this register destiny so basically addy when you use add add i yeah add i i would call you uh, i would call it like that i uh, add i using zero is basically moving the number into this register and we do the same here we move the number 14 to the register t1 and then we use this add instruction, which looks similar, but it's different. It adds the content of these two registers and store their result in this destiny register T9. And the last instruction is a store word, which reads the content of the source register. In this case, it's a T9 and then it stores this in memory. And we may address the memory in this format. First, we write a decimal number, which is the offset and the reference is gonna be the content of this register. In this case, we are using the null register, which we already know it's hardwired hard -wired to the number uh, zero. So it's basically gonna be saved into the direction of 68 in memory. Well, and these are the four instructions we, which we are seeing here, but as I don't have, I don't have enough seven segment displays, we're just watching here the four lower hexadecimal numbers of this instruction. And if I turn this switch on, we watch the higher numbers of these instructions as you may uh, prove right now. Okay, but is there any other way to debug this CPU even better? Because we are using a very slow clock. It's this one, this is the rhythm of the clock. It's basically one cycle per second but I can control this manually. Now, so first of all, let's uh, drive this uh, CPU to the reset state, which is basically saying, okay, just get stuck in destruction zero. This is just a reset, a hard reset into the program counter. You know, the program counter which drives which instruction is run next and so on. Now we are stuck in the first instruction and I am gonna disable the clock. Uh, I do this with this switch and now I just I can just disable the reset because the clock is not running anymore. And now I can debug. Uh, no, this wasn't the one I want to. Yeah, we can debug this step by step. We are in the first instruction as I check right now. I can see the whole instruction using this switch, the higher address and the lower address. Okay, but what else can we look at in this instruction? I would like to see the output of the ALU, for example, the ALU, Ar Arithmetic Logic Unit. I can switch to the ALU output here using this switch. So now 
I am looking at the higher address of the alu output and if I look at the lower address, I would expect to see in the number 12 you've written the hexadecimal, which is exactly what is showing right now, the number C. And if you notice, this is also part of the instruction because in the instruction, as it is an add immediate, this is actually part of the immediate number, which is stored in the instruction and not in the registry or in memory. It's directly stored in instruction. Okay, now let's advance to the second instruction. I'm still gonna be uh, wired to the ALU output. So let's go to the second instruction. I will just enable the, the clock for one second and then turn it off again. Okay, now we did advance one instruction and now we see the number E, which is basically number 14 in hexadecimal. But this time we are looking at the output ALU because if I go to the higher address, I see only zeros, which is fine. The all is only outputting the number 14. Okay, let's go to the third instruction. What should be what should we see in the output of the ALU? So the ALU is gonna add basically t zero plus t one. The output of this it's the sum of twelve and fourteen, which is twenty six. What is twenty six in hexadecimal? I think it was one A, so let's check that immediately. I'm going to advance the clock once and we have in the output of the ELU 1A. In the higher address we have only zeros which is fine and the in the lower address of the ELU we see 1A. Perfect. So the output of the ELU has 1A and this should be stored in T9. So the next instruction should read the content in T9 and just uh, store it here. How does the CPU compute, uh, how does it compute this address, which is basically adding the offset to the content of the register zero? It uses the ALU again, actually. So let's use the ALU to add those two numbers. And I'm gonna stay here in the output ALU and we should see the number 44, which is basically 68, but written in hexadecimal. Let's advance the clock once more. And I see the number 44 in the output of the ELU, which is perfect. And the higher address of this in the ELU should be also all the zeros. Perfect. Okay, so it would be also amazing to check that what are actually, what are we actually storing in the register of T9? What are we storing there? The, the output, uh, basically the sum of these two numbers, right? We already checked out that we are storing the number 26, which is 1A. But now I don't want to see the output of the ELU, nor I don't want to see the, the instruction. I want to see the content of this register. And I can see, the, I can see that here too, which is the second position here in the selector. And I did that just hard wiring uh, to it, to the register file to be precise. And I should see here the number 1A or 26. And perfect. I'm seeing right now the number 1A and a higher address. I should see only zeros, which is perfect. So this is the number that we are storing actually in memory. And this is the direction of the memory, which is 44. We already saw that. And just going back to the instructions, the higher part of the instruction here is AC19. We are looking at this, which is basically the opcode. I mean, this is more than just the instruction. You have to check uh, the format of the MIPS instruction. The opcode uses six bits, if I am not wrong, but here six bits are spread in the first position of this X, uh, X number in the second one. And then you have the registers and so on. So anyways, here there's more info than just the instruction is the, also this, this, the source registry mean and so on. But yeah, we are pointing at the last instruction. And now if we want just to execute the program with the slow clock again, we can enable the slow clock for good and it's gonna loop again over and over. And that's it. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to give a like and subscribe to this channel. More content like this towards computer architecture and FPGAs is coming. And don't forget to check out the repository where I uploaded this whole code in Verilog for you and System Verilog actually. And see each other. Uh, we see each other next time.